The next thing we're going to do in our register system is we're going to set a session for the user. You'll see inside my model here I have um, this set session and we're passing it some information. And I've abstracted this session stuff to its own function down here. You'll see I have a function called set session and we're doing this stuff right there. Um, there's a couple things we have to have in order before we do this. I'm just going to go over to my database right here and you'll see that I've um, altered my users table a bit. Um, we've added some more information. We have um, added a reg time right here and this is a timestamp and it's just uh, it's setting the current time as the default. And then we also have a field here activated. I'm just going to click on structure right here and you'll see that um, reg time the type is a timestamp and the default value is current timestamp. So we don't need to you know, pass the time to uh, MySQL in our function. Um, it can do that you know, all by itself. Uh, MySQL has that ability. And then for um, activated, we've set that to a tiny int. So basically, this is an integer um, of just one length. So it's going to be either a 1 or a 0 stored right here. Um, and then we also have the CI sessions table right here. And you'll notice that under the user data, um, I have some uh, data set for my own user here. And I'll just talk a little bit about um, how this works. Let's just make it a bit bigger here. And um, you'll see this is uh, the way this um, the way this is read is it's an array of a length of six. And then we have um, the first element is a string of seven characters. That's user ID, and its value is a string of two characters. That's ten. And it just goes on like that. Um, logged in is an integer, uh, and it has uh, it has a value of zero. So that's basically um, how that works right there. And what we should do is we should um, check out the um, our config file. So um, a couple things you need to do in your config.php. Um, we are using sessions, and we go our sessions using a database. So this config ses use database, you want to set that to true. And then I also have my session expiration set for a week. So this is a, a value in seconds. So I just did 60 times 60 times 24 times 7. And this is going to give us a session of one week. And when you're setting sessions, I, I think this is like the recommended way to do it, is actually to do the math instead of calculating it, you know, what its total is going to be. Because this is going to be a lot more reader for a lot more readable for other programmers um, looking at your code. They're going to be able to see um, that is a week as opposed to, you know, if you total this yourself, um, they're going to have to figure out, you know, how many seconds that is. Um, another thing we need to do is we need to set an encryption key when we use um, database sessions. So I've just set that to uh, random value right there. You can set it to whatever you want to. Um, if we go to um, autoload.php, we should load in our database library right here. And inside database.php, you're going to want to set your database credentials. So in my case, it's root with no password. And then I have my database name right here. But you should set that to whatever your database credentials are. So we can go back over to the model now. And you'll see that um, you know after we checked the affected rows was 1. Now we're going to set the session. And rather than putting all of your session stuff and everything all into one massive insert user function, it's going to be better to start abstracting things out into other functions. So, um, you know, in order to write good functions, they should be, you know, sort of bite-sized um, little procedures. And, you know, each function is doing its own little thing as opposed to one massive function that, you know, does 100 different things. This is going to be um, a lot more uh, easier to read and a lot easier to manage code. So I'm um, setting this dot set session and I'm just passing it this information right here and we can go down to that function here and you'll see that uh, it's taking all of these variables here and then we're uh, doing our SQL statement so select user ID from users where the email is equal to email and then limit one because we only want one record back and actually it would re only return one record anyways but uh, putting this here doesn't hurt. And the reason why I choose email here is because email is going to be a unique value in our database. We know that when the user was registering, um, they weren't able to register an email that was already in the database, and we checked for that. So there's going to be lots of Anthony's in our database, lots of Susie's. 
So I just chose email right here, and then we are going to get the user ID. And we saw in our um, in our users table right here, um, our primary key is user ID here, and this is an auto incrementing value. So we don't know what this value is going to be when we insert a user, but we do have their email address, so we can uh, we can grab that auto incrementing uh, unique user ID, um, you know, just by comparing it against their email. So let's just go back over here, and then we're getting their user ID like that, and then we are going to um, run this SQL statement, and that is going to return a result here. And when you are doing a fetch from your database and you're only getting one row back, um, the recommended way in CodeIgniter is to use result and then row right here. So we're getting an object back right, right here. And of this object, we want to access the row right here. And we go result arrow row and then parentheses there. That's being stored in this row variable right here. And then we can access the user ID like this, row, arrow, and then user ID. So inside our CES data um, associate of array right here, we are uh, we're adding in the user ID, first name, last name, country, email, and also logged in. We're setting that to zero because they haven't logged in yet. Um, but we do want this information in our session user data. So I'm just uh, creating it right here and we're setting it to zero because we know they're not logged in yet. Um, all they've done is registered so far. And then the way you set that to uh, the session in CodeIgniter is use this session and then set user data. And then we pass the associative array in right there. So we can go back over to the register form here now and let's create um, a new user. Let's use uh, Tony the Tiger and he can be from Albania. Tony at gmail.com and let's give a password of password and click register. And I've actually just output the session array right here. Um, if we go back over to my model right here, I just did a print R on, um, on all user data. So if you ever want to see all of the session data for one of your users, just use this session and then all user data. And I'm just print R, you know, using print R on it right here. And if you are ever, you know, curious about one of your arrays or objects or anything, you know, you can output that from any part in CodeIgniter. You can output that from your view, from your controller, from your model, anywhere you want to. Um, just use print R on it, or you can use, um, you can also use a var dump if you want to see even more information about it. Um, so I'm just using print R right here. And, um, you know, it's a bit hard to read right like this, but we can view the source of it. And you'll see we have the session ID right there. Um, the IP address is a bit weird because I'm on localhost right now, but um, if you are, you know, on a real server, then, uh, you know, it's going to show the IP address here. Um, some information about their client, their last activity and a timestamp, um, their user ID and all of that, uh, all of this custom user data that we stored um, is right there in here. And um, basically that's how to set a session in CodeIgniter. And thanks for listening.